If you watched my original video about the French-made Pixie A1571 camera, you'll recall I likened it to a temperamental French girlfriend. There were a lot of things about it I really liked, including the appearance, the company philosophy, and the whole idea of a software-defined camera. But there were also a lot of things about it I figured would drive most people crazy, including that it couldn't keep up with fast action, battery life wasn't very good, and the controls had a lot of irritating quirks. Still, to spoil the cliffhanger ending of the original video, I did wind up keeping the Pixie, and through practice I started getting more and more comfortable with it. For example, I had a nice long photo shoot with my ballerina friend Amaris, where the Pixie handled really well, didn't give me any battery life problems, and produced really beautiful results. In addition to Amaris, I also shot with the Pixie on various other kinds of subjects under a lot of different kinds of conditions. Including Christmas lights at night, buildings on sunny days, and even a traveling exhibition of American art. It all went pretty well, and then, right after Christmas, Pixie delivered an over-the-air software update that offered three significant improvements to how the camera works. The biggest improvement makes the Pixie more action-friendly by letting you change the sensor response time. Using a new menu option, you can set the sensor either to fine, which was the previous default, or fast, which increases its readout speed. I wish I could tell you that setting the sensor mode to fast turns the Pixie into a Nikon Z9, but it does That's not the way it works. I tested the raw throughput the same way I did in my previous video, pressing the shutter button once per second for a full minute, then counting how many pictures I actually captured. In sensor fine, I got 11 frames, just like last time. In sensor fast, I got 12. Not a huge improvement. But that's not the way most of us use a rangefinder camera. We're more concerned with shot-to-shot -shot speed, how quickly you can follow up with a second picture if something great happens right after your first picture. In my little test, setting the Pixie to sensor fast mode improved shot-to-shot -shot speed by 40%. I could get off six frames in three seconds instead of five seconds. Where that's going to help you is in a situation like a shoot with a model keeping up with her changing expressions. The processor pipeline still bogs down after six frames, so you have to budget a bit, but the update makes the Pixie feel a lot more responsive. And if you're wondering how much image quality you're going to give up by going to sensor fast, well, in the few test shots I've done so far, I honestly didn't see any, either in terms of looking at the actual images or examining their histograms. I don't know what Pixie has done to speed up the sensor processor pipeline, but it seems to be something that doesn't involve any image quality loss that I've been able to see so far. They may simply be allocating system resources differently or something. The next update isn't a breakthrough, but it's a nice improvement and it demonstrates the potential of a software-defined camera. It's about the auto-lock feature. Lots of cameras have a lock to keep you from switching off of auto-exposure mode by accident. On my Epson RD1, for example, it locks the dial mechanically in place until you push a little release button, which allows you to turn the dial to choose manual exposure settings. Once you're off of auto, the dial turns freely but then once you turn it back to auto, it locks in place again until you press the button again. Before the update, the Pixie did the same thing with what you might call a software lock. If you powered up the camera with the mode wheel set to auto, it would stay in auto even if you turned the wheel. You'd just see a warning on the display that the setting was locked. To get into manual mode, you had to half press the shutter button while you turn the dial. That would allow you to set manual shutter speeds. It took two hands, so it was kind of fiddly and a lot of people didn't like it. The update adds a prefs menu that lets you turn the auto lock either on or off. If you turn it off, 
you can just grab the selector wheel and choose any manual shutter speed you want without having to go through the business of holding down the shutter button as you turn the selector wheel. If you liked having the lock, you can just turn it on in the menu and you get the same behavior as previously. Another minor update gives you more options for improving battery life, which you'll recall I said was one of the possible deal breakers in my original Pixie review. Now I'd already discovered that you could improve battery life hugely just by keeping Wi-Fi turned off when you didn't need it. And most of the time while you're shooting, you don't need it. You can still do all of those clever things with the app, such as adjusting camera settings and viewing the pictures you've just shot, even with Wi-Fi off, because those features run over Bluetooth, which is a lot more power efficient. With Wi-Fi off and an extra battery in my pocket, I can wander around for hours taking pictures without really worrying about battery power at all. The update adds a few minor tweaks, such as letting you adjust the power off timer so you can fine tune how battery thrifty you want to be. So after a little more practice in these software updates, I'm now a lot more confident in the Pixie as an everyday photography tool. Mind you, it's still not for everybody. It's defiantly non-traditional, it's expensive, not all your M-mount lenses will fit, and it's definitely still very, very quirky. But it's definitely a lot easier to live with now, and besides, you wouldn't want your temperamental French girlfriend to go all normy, would you? I'd like to finish off with a public service announcement. Probably like most people, I had assumed that the name of this camera was just some kind of a cute pun. But guess what? It's not. It honors a 19th century French engineer named Hippolyte Pixi. What did he do? Well, in 1832, when he was all of 24 years old, he created the first electric generator, an invention that's had a huge positive impact on just about every aspect of civilization. Seems like a perfect namesake for a groundbreaking camera from an innovative French engineering company, doesn't it? If you're a native French speaker, you can laugh at my bad pronunciation, but I just want to say merci, monsieur Pixie.